and welcome here to Talk FCB and welcome back to the channel here today guys for plenty of Barca news coming your way. We're going to be discussing the likes of Zhao Cancelo. We've also got plenty of discussion and debate surrounding La Mina Mal. We've got team news on both sides ahead of PSG versus Barca and also some concern surrounding Ansu Fati. That is all on the way and more today. So sit back, relax and enjoy. And let's do this. But I do want to start, guys, with the super thanks shout out. And today we have to give a big shout out to my good friend Dylan, who is an Aussie. He's going to tell you how it is. And I absolutely love his confidence right now. He says he's already preparing for the trip to Wembley with La Mina Mal taking us along in his backpack. They're absolutely fantastic support there. And there are more kind donations coming in from India yet again and also from Nepal, currently residing in Australia as well so really really appreciate those guys but if we do start here with Zhao Cancelo in today's video because talks are already underway between Barca and Man City regarding his future George Mendes of course is leading those negotiations he's very much in charge of a lot of things that go on in terms of transfers at this club and things are believed to be progressing pretty well between the two clubs but what we have heard this morning in the media quite widely is that Man City ideally this summer they'd like 40 million maybe even more than 40 million euros for Cancelo and they believe that they could get offers of that amount there's interest in him they believe there they could get big money but that by the way from Man City there it's irrelevant it is absolutely irrelevant and the reason for that is Cancelo only wants Barca and even more so now than last summer you know he spent the season here he's really enjoyed his time at Barca he wants to stay here and only will sign for us and given remember that City don't want Cancelo Cancelo. They want to sell him. They want him gone from the club. Clearly, there's going to be a willingness here to find an agreement, to find something that works for both sides and get this deal done. Now, sources right now say that Barca are willing to maybe go as high as 30 million euros this summer for Cancelo, but some other people say they'd only be willing to go that high if it was another loan deal. And then at the end of another year on loan at the club, only then would it be an obligation to buy at the end of that. So Barca may even try, much like they're trying to do with Felix, to get another loan deal here to continue this and basically avoid having to pay anything at all this summer. But I'm just wondering right now, guys, based on the season that Cancelo has had, based on the impact that he's had in this Barcelona team, and of course his age and all of those things considered, what price would you be willing to pay to keep him at the club long term, to keep him here permanently for several more years? Let me know in the comments down below. But I do also want to give you some important team news update ahead of PSG versus Barca. That is the big game on our mind right now. And I want to talk again about Frank de Jong because the big news right now is that yesterday in Thursday's training session, he actually took part there in half of it with the rest of the group. Now, the club did not reveal that officially. They didn't make any sort of statement on that. But it's now emerged in the media that Frankie behind the scenes is working really well. He did do half of that session with the group. He's very nearly 100% recovered. And given that he still has several days, you know, there's plenty more days still to come before this game, he's looking good now. He's looking really good to be in contention, to play against PSG in that first leg. And certainly that training match on Saturday is going to tell us even even more about that. And that may, of course, mean now that, like we said yesterday, Roberto might not end up starting in midfield after all. Chaffee was certainly thinking about him. He's still in his mind for the PSG game. And I want to mention here a super thanks from Saeed, who's back on the channel. Fantastic again from him. And he says right now that Sergio Roberto is still worth keeping at the club for another two years. He is just that good in his natural position there, talking about midfield. And that is one for you guys there to debate right now in the comments below as well. But I do want to give you, though, more team news, this time on the side of PSG, though, and it's Bradley Barcola, who has returned to training today with the rest of the group. That happened this morning there, because this young man has missed PSG's last two games, and it looked as though he might miss the first leg against Barca with injury, 
But it looks like Barcola is going to be involved in some capacity now. The 21-year-old, he's an exciting talent there. He adds another dimension, I feel, to that PSG front line. And he's somebody that we are going to have to deal with if he is going to be involved. He's a dangerous player there. And we're going to be talking a lot more about those kinds of individual battles there. How we're going to square up. How we're going to face off. Particularly against that PSG front line. That's going to be the vocal point of this first leg. And we're going to be talking lots more about that. Very very, very soon indeed. Which brings us on then to one of the potential match winners of our own in our own front line. Of course, we've got to talk here about Laminia Malin. Let's start actually with an interview that he did just yesterday with Mundo Deportivo because I want to start first of all with a really important quote because remember, we've had real concern here, right here on the channel about the summer, about playing for Spain, about potentially they're doing back-to-back -back tournaments, the Euros and the Olympics. I have been really having sleepless nights about that but Laminia Mal is on hand to help me calm down because he says it is not logical to go for both. He said to play the Olympics after the Euros because it's about not being burdened, it's about not playing too much, and it wouldn't make sense. Obviously, in the end, you're playing for Spain. It is a dream, but he said, I think it's more important to be at the Euros. And quite clearly there, Yamal, he's saying, I'm not playing both. It does not make sense. It's not logical for me at my age. With my minutes being protected as they are right now, it does not make any sense. And he was even asked there, did Pedri influence your decision? With what happened with Pedri there, the fact that he played too and that he's really struggled physically since that summer, did that impact your decision? And Yamal admitted, yes, he's said it's an example of what can happen if you go and do that because he said he's the only one that I can really remember having done that so the Pedri case there definitely playing a part in Yamal's decision and I feel like Barca have made it crystal clear there not only to Yamal but also hopefully to Kubasi these players cannot really play to you know at that young age with the way we've got to handle their minutes right now as Yamal says it does not make sense but there was plenty of good stuff from this Yamal interview there not only that but he also spoke about Neymar in some detail that Neymar made him watch games, that he made things really fun for him as a fan. He was a spectacular player. And he said that Neymar was one of those players that I look up to most. And even now, he says, in his own game, some of the things that he does sometimes makes him think, OK, that's what Neymar used to do. And he also spoke about Messi too. He said Lionel Messi was his absolute idol, that he always looked up to him, that he was always watching Messi playing at Barca. And that actually brings me on to this Yamal debate right now, because there have been rumours in the media throughout the season so far, and especially of late, that next season, Laminia Mal could be given the number 10 shirt at Barca. The iconic shirt, the iconic 10 could go to Yamal. Now on that, Yamal was actually asked about that. He said, look, I hope to be a Barca legend. I hope to be like Messi, like Puyo, like Iniesta. He said, wearing the number 10, it is currently Ansu Fati's shirt. He said, if he's not here in the end, then I would be proud to wear it. It's a dream for any kid to be Barca's number 10. He said, nobody can say no, but it is something that the club must decide. And I'm wondering right here and now, guys, would you give him the 10? And obviously next season, he's going to be 17 years old. And you think of the pressure of that 10 shirt. We said all the same things, by the way, about Ansu Fati. Now, of course, he directly inherited it from Messi. Now it's gone to Ansu. It's then going to be passed on from him. So maybe it doesn't hold as much weight as maybe it did for Ansu taking over from Leo. But it's still a huge burden, I feel. And I just think right now, of course, for marketing, it would be gold. Of course, Yamal would certainly suit the shirt, the way that he's playing, the talent that he has. But is it a necessary step? Is it something there that could help his game? Is it something that we could maybe protect him from a little bit for another few years? Would it be best here just to let him develop, let him grow at his own pace, let him play the way that he is, and just give him that freedom without burdening him there with that weight of the shirt as quickly as just 17 years old next season? That that would be my point right now. But let me know, guys. Would you give him the 10? Do you think Yamal should have it now? And is he ready for that pressure and responsibility? Let me know down below on that as well. But hey... Let's talk about him. Let's talk about the man himself, Ansu Fati. Because actually right now, he is going through an even more difficult time in the Premier League with Brighton. Because he was an unused sub in Brighton's match against Liverpool. That was last weekend. And then before their most recent game on Wednesday there against Brentford, Roberto De Zerbi came out and said, before their most recent game, the expectations for Ansu, they're always very high. But he said he has to give something more. Because what he is doing 
is not enough right now. He said we're helping him, he's a sensitive guy, he's a good guy, and when you work with people like that, you're happy if you can help them. But De Zerbi was clear, he's got to do more. I want more from him. And it's not the first time that he's demanded more from Ansu. And after that very statement, Ansu then wasn't even included in Brighton's game against Brentford. He wasn't in the squad, he wasn't on the bench, he was nowhere to be seen. And after the game, of course, De Zerbi was asked more about that. And he said, Fatty and Barco, I decided to play without them in the squad for this game. I wanted them to work alone and to improve their physical condition. So he said there, there was no injury. It was simply a case of me deciding to leave Ansu out of the squad. And he went on to say, Ansu is working well, but from him, I have different expectations. I expect more. He said, I don't change my opinion about him, though. He is one of the best talents in the world at his age. And our responsibility is to help him improve. He said to improve his performances, to improve his physical condition, to improve his mentality, because in the Premier League, you've got to be stronger mentally, you've got to be stronger physically. Then we will be ready to play with him in the starting lineup. When he shows us the right condition, I will be happy. So De Zerbi right now, he's not pulling any punches. He is openly coming out and publicly saying Ansu is not ready. For what I am demanding from him, from what I expect from Ansu Fati, with the talent that he has, he's not doing enough. He has to give more. He has to be better. He's got to work harder, perhaps. And I do think these words from De Zerbi, they come from somebody that cares about Ansu, that's somebody there that believes in him. He wanted him at the club. He believes in the talent. He said there he's one of the best young talents around. But he's trying to get it out of him. And right now, it's not really happened for him this season at Brighton. And I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens in the summer. We've heard rumours, of course, about Ansu extending his stay at Brighton under De Zerbi, that he wants another season there to get the talent out of him, to work even harder to bring that through. But my question right now would be, De Zerbi's future, though, it's unclear, isn't it? You know, we don't know that De Zerbi will even be at Brighton next season. He himself right now is looking around. He's talking with a few other high-profile clubs and De Zerbi may not even be there. And of course, if he's not, then I don't think this spell at Brighton is going to continue for Ansu. And even if De Zerbi does stay there, are Barca willing to say, OK, let's do this again. Let's do this for another year. Because as of right now, it hasn't really worked out for Ansu in the Premier League. Would there be a better destination for him? Are Barca going to try and recover his level themselves? All of these questions are to come. But what do you make of Ansu's situation right now, guys? What do you make of those words there from De Zerbi? And are you concerned? concerned about Ansu Fati and his current level right now. So indeed, guys, there are plenty of things that you can get involved with in the comments today. Lots of different topics. There are a whole range of them that I really want your thoughts on. And of course, we are still building up to the monumental clash between PSG and Barca with big videos coming imminently on that. I will see you soon for all the fun, for all of the excitement. And I thank you indeed for all of your great support. I will catch you soon. But until next time. Yeah, as always, Vishka, Yelbasa. Uh...